now live the June 10th, 2016 Small Business Accounting Advisors. This is the Sage demo. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hey. We have some special hello. guests today. We're happy to have Tar and Wade with us. Would you like to explain what we're doing today, Tar? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, again, it's a privilege to, to be with you group this afternoon. I, I really love uh, ending the week on a high note and this is definitely a, a high group and I don't mean that in the in the uh, you know, <laughs> medical sense. <laughs> so, Although this is happy well, hour. <laughs> yes, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to have some fun with it. Um, Wade, Wade will be uh, taking us through the presentation of SAGE. Uh, we're, we'll be going through SAGE view today which is the business intelligence dashboard that connects not only to the Sage uh, 50 and Sage 1, uh, so QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, it was it just recently, I think I mentioned last week, uh, when I was in Los Angeles at the California CPA uh, Innovation Business and Accountants Conference, it won the Innovation Award second year in a row. Um, and I think part of the reason is it is software agnostic. It's focused on what financial advisors and accounting professionals really need to be able to have a meaningful conversation and change from uh, simply <coughs> recording history in the, by way of numbers and bookkeeping to actually in real time managing information and helping, uh, helping their clients um, use that information to make financial and operational improvements. So that's really the goal of it. The way that he's going to put that into you know, right into our faces. The last thing I would say, pricing wise, right now, there is no um, contract minimum term on Sage View. They have continued the promo where any accounting professional, uh, not a client, not an end user, but an accounting professional, can acquire Sage uh, View for a subscription of nineteen. 95 per month. However, that includes five client connections. So that breaks down to about eight cents a month per client. You know, literally four dollars, four dollars a month. You know, uh, it, it, I'm sorry, not eight cents, but four dollars, three ninety-five a month per client. Additional clients are three ninety-five on a on a one by one basis. But the first nineteen ninety-five includes a pack. Um, we'd like you to try it out for at least three months. But there is no contract. There is no obligation to use it for, you know, 30 days or 30 years. You, you decide if it fits and connects. And I've never had anyone say, oh, well, that was a waste um, of time and effort. Also, Wade, uh, Amina, and the team at Sage offered live support. And uh, Wade can maybe tell us a little bit more about uh, classes that are there for introduction, for onboarding. You will have a formal onboarding session with Sage, which is where support will reach out to you at a time, for example, James is confirmed um, for 10 a.m. Pacific time next Monday morning. And our goal will be to connect actual QuickBook clients or Sage clients to the product and start using real data from the get-go. So um, bear in mind that that promo is available. So anyone who would like to take advantage of that, uh, please either through Gina or me directly, reach out to myself or Wade, and we'll make that happen. For anybody in this group, I guarantee it. Okay? Well, we need any, to any raise questions? our hand. I'm raising my hand, but you can't see it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is, that, is that 1995 now? Forever, I mean, even if past the three month period. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Once you once you've signed up under the uh, that subscription, just like on the Sage One, where year two it's five dollars a month for the client. That number number, you know, it's not going to be. Oh, we got you at nineteen ninety five. Now it's going to be ninety nine ninety five. <laughs> That's no, an awesome. That is the deal. number. That's it really is. Good. Again. Yeah. Go ahead, Wade. All right, Sorry. Wade, uh, by, by way of introduction, Wade, Wade, we don't get to see Wade today because uh, he's just too handsome. We would all be humbled, and he likes to be the wizard behind the 
<laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna you're, you, you're, you really would be humbled by my uh, looks. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. Are, are you ready for me now, Gina? We're ready. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen out. Just bear with me one moment. If I can find it. Down at the bottom in the middle. Down at the bottom in the middle. You have to put your mouse over it. it. Um, One yeah, of I'm these looking for it. I really don't see my screen. That is that your screen, Tar? I don't know if that's mine uh, or not. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not sharing my screen. My yeah, screen I don't think should have. Uh, at the point at this point. My screen's not appearing here. Is it underneath another window? Let me see. Show all windows. We had it. We, yeah, we had it for sure. I'm just not able to. I've got a Sage View slide presentation up. Oh, here we go. Maybe that's it. There we go. Okay. All right. Are we, are we on now? Yes. Yeah, Thank goodness. All right. It just wasn't showing up on the screen. But um, anyway, um, to introduce myself, my name is Wade Essick. Um, I am one of the cloud solutions engineers here at Sage. Um, and uh, kind of uh, been involved with Sage View ever since the beginning. Uh, I was on the very first sales team that promoted that. And in the meantime, I uh, was promoted into the sales engineer role um, where I am now uh, with Sage and, and doing demonstrations for uh, you fine folks. So um, with that being said, um, let's go ahead and kind of dive in. And first thing I want to um, point out is, is we're going to talk a little bit about Sage Impact. Now, if, um, if you all think of uh, your smartphone, for instance, um, so on your smartphone, you, you would be able to manage all of your applications from there. And that's what Sage Impact allows you to do, is manage all of your Sage apps directly from here, as well as any recommended applications, you know, kind of like your app store in your, smart, in your smartphone. Um, at the top of your screen, um, now, I do want to um, add this as well. Sage has kind of shifted gears over the last couple of years, and now we're more focused in on the accountants more so than your end users, which would be your business clients. And in doing so, we've developed tools, um, and I'm going to show you, or actually I'm going to talk to you a little bit about each tool that we have available today uh, within our Sage arsenal um, that would help you um, become more efficient and more profitable in your office. And uh, one of those tools is Sage Impact. This is actually the hub of where everything starts. So er if you think of Sage Impact, just think of this as your starting point. Every time you come in in the morning, you want to log into Sage Impact. So Sage Impact, if you follow me across the black bar over here, um, if you click on the down arrow right next to your name, um, you'll see a place that says you, uh, my profile. This is where uh, I'm you can sorry. go in and um, Wade, we're not seeing. We just see the Sage view. Mm -hmm. I'm not. We see the slide way, but we're not the impact or the uh, you know your your uh, your window. It's, it says it says your screen sharing is passed, and then it says stop share. What does that mean? It says your screen. It says I say you are viewing Wade Essex screen. What does yours say? Mine says your screen sharing is passed. And then it says right next to it, it's in red. It says stop share. And then it says please move this window away from the shared application. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm showing now. I, I was okay. supposed to be on Sage okay. Impact. Try stopping the screen share and then restarting again. Okay. Oh, here it says resume share. So let's resume do that. Resume share, yes. Okay. And now I need to, how do I change screens? I see your okay. mouse moving. All right, so now I'm on the new, now I'm on the new share screen. Um, and how do I get, well, to, okay, there we go. Stop so, and restart. Here we go, I've got it now. I, I've got this figured out now. Okay, now you should good. be able to see, now you should be now able to see Sage Impact. Sage Impact, yes. Thanks, okay. Dave. All right. 
I apologize for the technical difficulties. I am an engineer, but not on Zoom. So let's uh, move forward with that. Um, so <clears throat> in the black bar across the top of your screen, now I was able to show you uh, where the My Apps were. Or here's the My Apps area uh, and the recommended apps. And uh, following the black bar across the top of the screen, this is where it's uh, Sage Impact. And then right across here, you can go um, click the down arrow, and here's your My Profile area. This is where you would be able to go in and build out your own complete profile. Um, and then you would also be able to go into the My Settings area, where you're going to actually have the option uh, to build out, or actually to change the background here. You would also be able to bring in your Outlook email and your, also your Gmail account, whichever one you decide to choose. The associated calendar will populate right here. So if you choose Outlook, you're going to have the Outlook calendar. If you choose Gmail, you're going to have the Gmail calendar. Right next to that, we have a live Twitter feed. So those of you who do like to tweet would be able to do so um, right here. You would actually be able to see all of your updates in your Twitter feed. Um, right next to that, we have Sage City. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Sage City, Sage City is actually a place that you can go in, communicate with other Sage Accountants Network members if you so choose. Um, you would also be able to um, uh, pull up instructional videos around different products as well as um, view different forums of information by other Sage Accountants Network members who use Sage products. And uh, you could actually uh, learn a little bit more how they're uh, becoming more efficient and more profitable in their office. Um, right below that, or actually right next to this area over here, um, I'm not sure if you guys can see it because I've got the video is over here, but we have, uh, there's this little pink box back here. This is your favorites area, and you would be able to go ahead and uh, put in any customizable quick links and be able to categorize those so you'd be able to pull those right up as well. And that's including um, QuickBooks Online, too. Yeah, that's including yeah, anything need. that has a uh, web address. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Any, anything that you want to put in there, if you want to put QuickBooks Online in there to have access to that from Sage Impact, you are more than welcome to do so. Okay. Um, now, right below that area, we have the section for your all of your Sage applications. This is any application that you're subscribed to with Sage. Starting from left to right, we have uh, Sage One, which some of you are already familiar with Sage One. Sage One is an on online accounting tool um, used to compete against QuickBooks and Xero and some of the other ones out there. Um, it's designed for that shoebox type client, um, one to ten employees typically, right around that area. But uh, Sage, if you have not looked at Sage One, highly recommend that you take a look at that. Next to that, we have Sage View, which we're going to talk about in detail. Uh, Sage 300 is an online enterprise system designed for those uh, medium to larger manufacturing companies. Um, and then to the next to that, we also have Sage Match. Sage Match is kind of a lead driving tool. Um, it's going to help drive leads into your business. Uh, you can go in, build out a complete profile, hours of operation, services that you offer. Uh, you'll also be able to put in a uh, profile picture and a company logo. Um, so you can kind of think of uh, Sage Match as uh, like a dating website, match.com, but you're going to be able to date the uh, business clients. You're going to have them uh, be able to uh, attract you. So um, anyway, so uh, to the right of that, we have Sage Value. Uh, Sage Value uh, was actually created because um, one, of the, uh, one of the really hot spots within the accounting world right now is around value pricing and should I be on an hourly based billing rate or a value based pricing rate? Well, Sage Value allows you to create that blueprint um, for your business and in, in doing so, what you're going to be able to do is have better dialogue with your clients because you're going to, you're going to be able to build out a complete list of interview questions. Uh, you're also going to be able to blueprint all of the packages that you want to offer within your business. We recommend choosing anywhere from two to four packages. kind of gives your client more options, and, uh, and you'll, you'll be able to name those packages anything that you want, such as gold, silver, bronze. I think I have mine in there as Essentials Professional Elite. Um, but you'll be able to name those packages anything you want, put the services that you want to offer, um, and it just allows you to build out that complete value model. Okay, 
Um, over to the right of that, we have a recommended app section, e-file cabinet, Sage Online Payroll Services. You can do as much research as you want here. Uh, if you decide you wanted to subscribe to something or talk to a sales rep, you'll have instructions while you're doing that research. Uh, down below that, we have a place for all of your news and customer stories. Uh, we, have an, we have kind of like a scroll bar here where you can actually scroll across the screen, um, search things out like Sage Summit, which is going to be in Chicago. Tara alluded to that earlier. Um, if you have not ever been to one of these, um, we, we do invite you to come out. Um, it's a lot of fun. You'll be able to learn so much about Sage um, in that forum. I think you'll really, uh, really appreciate what Sage has to offer just by attending one of those summits. Um, to the, you know, and then uh, if we keep going, you can do research around Sage Accounts Network, Sage Payroll Services, uh, different things like that. Uh, right below that, we have a customer stories area where you can read up on more how uh, Sage uh, colleagues around the globe are utilizing Sage to make their office more efficient and more profitable. Uh, right below that, we do have an area here where you can go into Sage University. Um, if you have never participated in Sage University, it's, uh, this is where you can come in uh, and take those certification courses that Tara was alluding to. Um, so, uh, so, so definitely come into Sage University. Uh, every course you take within Sage University will earn you CPE credit. Um, we do have product-specific courses as well as uh, regular accounting courses. Uh, some are paid, some are free, um, or actually most are free, um, I believe. And uh, and then if uh, why you know even the ones that are paid courses are very reasonably uh, priced out. Over to the right of that, we have our Sage Knowledge Base. Sage Knowledge Base is just another area for uh, support. So if you don't like to phone, email, or chat, or communicate whatsoever, you can do the research on your own. Find the problem on your own. So that, that's, how, that's all about Sage Knowledge Base. All right. Um, so with that being said, um, and I'm, actually, I'm going to pause here and see if there are any questions on Sage Impact, then we'll go into Sage View. I have a question. Is this... Is this complimentary or is this um, something we sign up for? Yeah, this is complimentary, and um, Sage Match and Sage Value are also free. Okay. It's a nice dashboard, Dennis. I've had it since um, SleaterCon. Okay. Um, I, I've just gotten into the Sage One, but, but this is really, it's really kind of slick. And the Sage One Account Edition is, is it no charge for accountants? The, yeah, the the accounting yeah, yeah, I was going to say the um, any accounting professional can sign up for Impact and have an Sage One Accountants Edition, absolutely at no charge. The only charge that you have right now. Uh, Tar, you're breaking up. If you want a bundle of license, you can purchase. Yes. Okay. Okay, we lost the connection. Yes, you can purchase 25 licenses for $25 now, that fact. And there is no other own of those 25 licenses, as I mentioned in previous, that's, you know, that's what that's all about. Your version is zero cost. Okay, I'm just kind of thinking, uh, may want to play with it, so it'd be nice just to... I, I would suggest you get the 25 licenses. It's $25 yeah. for a year, and you can put 25 clients on it. Use it as you will. I mean, that's like two cups of coffee, practically. Okay, so when you say put 25 clients, you basically give them access, and they can run their system off. They have their... Now, is there any... Uh, after a year, is there any cost? Does everybody still get the 25? Do they still get the free... Five dollars. Yes, yeah, per month uh, uh, subscription to the client. There is no contract, no minimum time requirement. Um, okay. Simply five dollars a month. However, my experience has been more of the accounting professionals who said, "Bill my bill my practice sixty dollars for client A, B, or C each one, and I'm going to go ahead and bill the client ninety five dollars a year or one hundred and ninety five dollars a year." Okay. As part of my services, maybe part of my Sage value. You okay. know, as part of the bundle, I say we well, get Sage One as part of your, you know, as part of your gold package, and that has a value retail of at least ten dollars a month today. 
but you're getting it for one dollar. So don't. If you want to give it away, you can. If you want to uh, add that as a uh, as a service, it has value. It takes you time to set up that client. Maybe not that long, but still, your time is valuable. Um, you can bill for it. It's your up to you. So how does that compare to which version of QBO does that compare to? Is that like the essentials or is that the plus? I'm going to well, say, it's it's like, the, uh, go ahead, Todd. Yeah. No, I was going to say, um, maybe it's, it's hard, to, hard to draw apples and apples comparison. The differentiator is Sage One allows connection to unlimited bank accounts and you can have unlimited users. Okay. But it's not it's not based on a client number of client charge. So it's more like zero. It's just one, one product. Can I'm thinking that that question is better asked maybe in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Let's it's move on to uh, Wade and, and Steve. You. I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so moving back into the Sage View mode, um, I'm going to have to swap screens again, I'm sure. Um, let me, first of all, can everyone see this screen that I'm showing now? The client list? Yes. The client. Okay. Yes. Okay so, okay, so we're good there, so I don't have to swap screens. Yeah. Okay, good. This is Sage View, okay. Yes, this is Sage View. Now, typically from Sage Impact, you would just click here, but I've already have it open. So this is Sage View. Um, let me just make sure I'm not timed out. If I'm timed out, I need to log back in. So just bear with me. No, nope, I'm still in. That's good. Okay. So let me let me go ahead and uh, start by saying um, Sage View was actually developed with you, the accountant, in mind. Okay, this is an accounting tool. Um, and this tool was developed so that you're going to be able to, de to deliver proactive advice to your business clients around key ratios that are automated through a connection piece. That connection piece, which I'm going to talk about now because it's relevant, so let's talk about the connection piece real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect up to your business client software. If you have a client that is off-site Okay, they're off site, they have their own accountant and their bookkeeper, or maybe it's even you, the accountant, going to their site and entering information into their accounting software, you're going to use the invite process. Okay, um, if, you have a, uh, if you have a client that is on site, okay, and uh, you're entering information into your own accounting software, then you're going to use the connection process. Okay, and I'm going to explain both. So let's go ahead and click on the invite process or the off-site. All right, now here's the connection process. So we're going to connect up to one of your business clients. We're going to fill out their business name. We're going to fill out their first and last name, email address, telephone number. We're going to click on this little acknowledgement here. Okay, we're, then we're going to come up here and we're going to choose the accounting software. Okay. Now, listen closely because this is important. So Sage 50 is one of the connection processes. We're also going to offer a QuickBooks desktop. Okay. Now, that can be the three previous years, so 16, 15, and 14. All right. Sage 1, we're going to be able to connect up to, which we just talked about. And now we are also going to be able to connect up to QuickBooks Online. Okay. It's a very nice connection piece for you guys. All right. We can also connect up to any QuickBooks hosted environment as long as they're in the Cloud9. Okay, they have to be on Cloud9 hosted. Any other hosting environment will not work. So those are the five connection pieces that we currently have in place. Does anyone have any questions on that? We're good I have to go. A quick one. Uh, yes, ma'am. If it's QuickBooks Desktop. And we store the we store the data with QBox, but when we work on the the we're working on QuickBooks Desktop, and mm -hmm. it just goes out and gets the data and brings it down to our hard drive. So we would just connect it to well, or won't that work? Yeah, it, it that that will work. Um, I, th I think the way I understand you is is you're storing the data. Now, now the, actually, I'm sorry, so that will not work because the data has to be, the data will have to reside on your machine 
Otherwise, it will not it will not bring in data from other sources. Well, I, okay. it, it'll work because whenever I open QuickBooks and open that data file, it is on my machine. Yeah, it'll work. It's okay. Down. Yeah. 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 So if it, it is on your machine, okay. it will work. Yes. Got it. It's on okay. my hard drive. Thank you. Okay. Now, when you All right. You're that, welcome. Can I? I have a question. So, when it says choose your accounting software, so is this to convert it to migrate it over to Sage? No. This, okay. this is no. This is not a migration. This is not bringing any data. What it's doing is it's taking information from the general ledger, used to create the calculations in Sage View to give you the ratios for your business clients. So, oh, so okay. it's not, it's not it's not moving any data. It's basically it's basically taking that data just as a reporting mechanism, and it's a one time feed into Sage View. How about how about zero? Is that going to be on the list eventually, or? It is. Yes, sir. Do you have an ETA? Yep, that like maybe next 90, 180 days or something like that? Or do you know? Um, I'm going to say before the end of the year, but it, it most likely will be in before that, yes. Okay. Wait, the, on the desktop, though, it's still not enterprise, though, right? It's just Pro and Premiere? Uh, right. and we are we are working on the um, QuickBooks Enterprise Connection piece um, at this time, um, so I, I do want to I do want to make sure that everyone understands that. So that 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 particular connection piece is being worked on. Um, and we we do have we do anticipate that that will happen over the next month, and we should have a strong connection with QuickBooks Enterprise. I think I think we we're going to see a lot of announcements. We did at SleaterCon when. Uh, when Summit rolls around in uh, Chicago next month, they love to just roll these things out and go, look what we've yeah. done, you know, and uh, yeah. you know, make, make a lot of impact and a lot of noise and buzz. Yeah. Okay. Um, so any other questions on the connection area? Okay. So let's go ahead and move back over to the uh, client side. And then I'm just going to real quickly show you the um, internal connection. So the internal connection will not take as long because um, that's actually a, a more simplified process. So let's go ahead and click back on connect client. Now this is an internal connection. So this will be connecting up with your software internally. And all you're going to do here is you're going to fill out the business name, first and last name, telephone number, select the accounting software. Um, and then click on the acknowledgement. At that point, when you select done, you're going to get a screen pop, and that screen pop is going to contain a. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Uh, it's going to it's going to contain a um, a code, and that code uh, is you're just going to highlight it and drop it into the uh, accounting software underneath the Sage View tab, and you're connected. Okay. We, we have a tremendous support staff uh, during the onboarding call. They're going to walk you through both of those scenarios. They're also going to make sure you have a complete understanding um, of how to get those connections going. Um, and, uh, but uh, our support staff is open, so anytime uh, you have any questions, you can call myself, you can call Amina, um, and uh, we will be glad to assist you with anything that you need. Um, so going back over to the client area, uh, anyone have any questions on uh, any more of the connection piece? I don't see anything in chat. I think we're good, Wade. Okay, good to go. All right. So, all right. So as I said before, um, this was developed so that you could deliver more proactive advice to your uh, business clients. Okay. And those business clients are going to really appreciate and love what you're going to be providing them because um, we're going to automatically do all of these calculations for you. Everything in Sage View is going to be date driven. So the first thing you want to do is um, you want to select the correct uh, calculation period. Right now we have today's date selected, but we have options as day to day, month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and a rolling 365. Now I'm just going to change it over to month to date, and you'll see these numbers refresh real quick, and there they are. I mean, it's just that quick. Uh, if we take the end on date here, we are on 12-31-2014. We can actually come over here to January 31, 2015. It does a quick calculation, and there's the numbers, okay? Um, now, in addition to the client company, you're going to have nine different columns to choose from running across the top of your screen here, 
okay, nine different ones. You can interchange these with other uh, ratios. You can also interchange them with other informational uh, pieces, and you can also move um, the columns around as you wish, okay? And, I, and I'll show you how to do that. So in order to change the columns, you just hit the settings button. Um, we have a drag and drop method, so you can just kind of like drag them down there, you know, anywhere you want. Um, I don't like to move too much of that around, but, uh, but typically if you want to interchange a ratio, you can click on alerts or another uh, average AR days, come down here and put total cost of goods sold. And then you have the, uh, the you have all that changed. Okay, just that simple. Um, and now I'm going to kind of scroll down to the bottom of this list, and you can see all of the information pieces that we have available, and ratios, of course. Okay, so on and so forth. It's uh, it's very uh, it's very extensive. Okay, and that's the way that will work. So. Um, as you're looking at these columns, um, anything in green uh, is going to appear as satisfactory. Anything in yellow will be moderate. Uh, now, at the moderate level, you probably want to have a conversation with your business clients to go ahead and uh, uh, get them going back in the right direction to turn that green. Um, and of course, anything in the red, which will appear as unsatisfactory, um, means you need some, to do some investigation with your business client and figure out what went wrong and what y'all need to do to correct that to get them turned back in the green, okay? And you'll just have that conversation with them. Um, typically, they're business owners. They're going to want to hear that. Um, you know, they definitely don't like being in the red. You know that. Um, so anyone, any, uh, anything that says NA means that that ratio is not applicable for that business client. Um, if you ever do see any Xs, that means that data is not made available because some initial uh, setup needs to be complete before that data will be made available. I have a question. Go um, ahead. How, what happens if you want to have more ratios on that page? Does it scroll to the right or does it, um, are you limited by the number of columns you have on this particular screen? You are limited by the number of columns that you have on this screen, um, and the reason, the main reason for that is, is because um, uh, you just, you know, we we have it set at nine um, additional columns into the client company. But once you start drilling down in, you can have as many of those ratios showing as you want to. Okay, and once you start drilling down into a company, then uh, we have a whole page where you can show all of those ratios. This is just what. This is what you want to look at basically as a glance. Okay. Now, so if you drilled into ABC Manufacturing, you'd get another, another screen that would show you all the different ratios? So yes, sir. So, oh, so let's okay. do that now. Okay. All right. So this is ABC Manufacturing Company. Okay, and now I'm, gonna, now I'm just going to kind of take you down this list here. Um, now, I'm going to kind of uh, – I'm going to kind of – go over your question real quick because I want you to see this, but we're going to come back and I'm going to show you what the alerts are. Um, now, the summary actually gives you the income, less expense, gives you a total net income. And then all graphs in Sage View are interactive, so you can actually scroll across the timeline to see how your business client is trending at any given level on the timeline. Um, as you scroll down the page, here's a list of all of your key performance indicators or ratios. And um, this is where you can have them turned on or off for any business client. Uh, quite a few of them. I'm just going to take you down the list to show you that we have a lot more than nine listed there. And you can keep on going with this list. Okay. Um, now, for the KPIs or key performance indicators, um, basically, uh, if you're in front of the business client, you just want to view a graph a little bit larger in front of them. You can click on the magnifying glass. That will bring up this area. Okay. You can also set all of your goals and thresholds from this page as well just by clicking on the settings button. Okay. And there, you'll set your annual goal, you'll set your lower threshold, and your upper threshold. Anything in between will appear as moderate. Anything over will appear as satisfactory. Anything under will be unsatisfactory. As you are filling this information in, your quarterly, monthly, and daily goals will automatically be set for you. Pretty cool. Okay. So now what we're going to talk about are the alerts area. Okay. 
So with the alerts, um, I'm, now to set the alerts, you can click on Edit Settings. You can also come up here to the Alerts tab. Now Sage View allows you to create these customizable alerts. Well, there's four different ones that you can choose from. We have a KPI Tolerance Event Alert. We have, uh, and I'm going to come back to that one in just a moment. We have, uh, that's the one that you will use most often, by the way, uh, but I'm going to come right back here because I'm going to give you an example on that one. Uh, KPI value range event alert. This is where um, you're going to create an alert around a specific value range, so, such as profit margin, for instance. So if you wanted to create a value range event alert and you wanted to get an alert for whatever reason around uh, profit margin, maybe at 30.1 to 34.9, that would be your value range. Um, so that would be a value range event alert. The date event alert is going to be pretty self-explanatory, but if you have a, um, you know, a big appointment coming up or a big date that you want to keep in mind to get an alert on, that's where you would set up a date event. A uh, recurring date event is where if you wanted to set up every other Friday for payroll or maybe the first Friday of every month for an important meeting you have with a client, whatever the case may be, that's a recurring date. Okay, now the next one I'm going to talk, or the one that I am going to talk to you about is the KPI Tolerance Event Alert because this will probably be the one that you're going to use most often. Um, and let's just say, for instance, ABC Manufacturing Company has a cash flow problem. And we want to keep an eye on their cash flow by creating an alert around that. So every time ABC Manufacturing Company <laughs> drops below $10,000, we want to get an alert triggered over to us. So how do you set that alert? Well, you're going to come down here and you're going to name it. Now, you can type anything you want in these boxes here. Um, I just, I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> but, but you can type anything you want there. Um, now, in the alert type area, that's already been selected. So now what we're going to do is we're going to choose the KPI or non-financial metric that's going to trigger this alert. So uh, we're going to hit this drop down here. And we're going to select from our standard KPIs, but I do want to point out in this particular instance while it's up here is in Sage View, we do allow you to build out your own custom KPIs. So those of you who like to play around with formulas and, and really have some fun with that, feel free to build out your own custom KPIs with Sage View. Um, also, we allow you to build out non-financial metrics. So um, an example of non-financial metrics, and I'll just use this one that I have here, um, let's say you have a restaurant and you have 200 seats in that restaurant and you want to find out on a daily basis or maybe on average how many people are sitting down every night to eat dinner in your restaurant. That would be an example of a non-financial metric that you can create with SageView. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and select from our standard KPIs. So what did we say? We wanted to create a uh, KPI that gave us... Um, uh, how much cash we had, um, so we want to use cash on hand. Then we're going to select $10,000 because we want to get an alert below 10000 So we're going to select uh, in the Becomes box 10000 Format is going to be a value because it's not a percentage, and the condition is going to be less than the KPI goal of $10,000. Okay, and then we're going to hit uh, Today's Date. And at that point, we would hit save, and every time this business client drops below $10,000 in cash on hand, we're going to know it. All right. In Sage View, we also allow you to create stackable alerts. So if we wanted to continue this, we could hit this little plus sign out here to the side, and we could do an and or method. So we can set the condition as and or or, and then create the next alert type. Good. Very good. Okay. Um, any questions on alerts before I move in, move into key performance indicators tab? Okay, we're good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you for ABC Manufacturing Company, we have all of these KPIs here that are turned on. What if I wanted to turn one off? Okay. So basically I come up here, I go to key performance indicators. Okay, um, now I'm going to open up some categories so you can see that I have all the categories here. And I'm going to have the option to turn these off or on depending on how I see fit. So here if I didn't want gross profit, I could just come down here, select off. I can select again to turn it back on. 
I can also edit my goals and thresholds directly from here as well. Okay. <laughs> Um, we, also, we also have the ability, when you build out your own custom KPIs and, and non-financial metrics, you will have the ability to go ahead and turn these on or off for any business client that you see fit as well. Okay. Now, in SageView, we do um, have a very unique client-facing report. Now, with the client-facing report uh, with SageView, um, it's not only informational for your business client because you're actually going to be able to distribute this either on a weekly or monthly basis, um, but uh, it's, it's going to be educational for them as well. So let me show you what I mean by informational and educational. So we come up to reports. We come down here to client summary report. It's opening now. There we go. So um, we're going to select the client company. So we're going to start building out this report. We're going to select the KPIs that we want to choose for this company. Okay, and I do recommend um, if you decide to move forward with SageView, you go ahead and hit the Select All button here. Um, that way you can just kind of cut these off if you don't want them on the report. See, so then you can kind of unselect or select. Okay, um, now. We have an end on date here, so you can actually choose an end on date. Um, we, the only languages we offer right now are English and French because we are in Canada also. And included in the report, you can include a financial glossary and a portfolio average. At that point, you would go ahead and hit generate. I've already got one open here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the completed area. I'm going to enlarge this for all the people who have bad eyesight like I do. <laughs> okay, so um, so here here is what I mean by educational. Okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna define every ratio and tell your business client what it means, because sometimes they're just not gonna know what what any of this means. Okay, um, I'm not saying all business owners are like that, but you've dealt with enough that you know. Um, so we have average accounts payable days. We're gonna say what it means. We're also going to give them the formula of how we came up with this figure, and then we're going to tell them what it means if the value is low and what it means if the value is high. We're also going to give them an overview of each calculation period of how they're doing on today's date, month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and they're rolling 365. And we're going to do this for every single ratio that we have listed on the report. That, that kind of information is, is the value add for the financial advisor. I don't care if it's you know, between Wall Street and Main Street or you know, small business advisors. There's no reason you can't kick it up a notch with the information that's already in hand, whether it's on QuickBooks or Sage, and offer something like this to a client and, and add on wow. And wow, and wow with a punch. It's meaningful, it's real, it's data we can manage. Sorry, Wayne, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I really, really, uh, I really get this, and I hope everybody does. I, I really get this too. This is great. I'm, I'm loving it. Good, good. Um, so the next thing on the report. Now, what, what I did was I just scrolled kind of to the bottom a little bit because I wanted to show you a couple other things on this report that I think are valuable. Um, we actually go over the net income with your business clients as well. So we give them a look at their expense versus income on a daily basis, month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and a rolling 365. And then we go into their income statement balances, and we also do that for each calculation period as well. That way they can see it in that form. Um, and then right below this, we have a financial glossary. And in the financial gloss where we just get actually, uh, you know, go over some terms that they might be looking at on the report that they just need a refresher on. And then right below that, we have a KPI value summary report that actually goes over all of your, um, you know, efficiency, liquidity, and all that good stuff or, you know, profitability. Um, we have, uh, and then we give them the balance and how they're doing against your portfolio average um, as well. So, uh, so there's a lot of value added in this report. 
Next thing I want to talk to you about, uh, any questions on that report, by the way, before we move on? I have a question. I was on a webinar yesterday on benchmarking. Do you have the capability? I mean, do you, are you able to import industry averages or that kind of thing? Um, the, uh, the good news is, is that uh, within probably about uh, one to one and a half months, we are going to have industry benchmarking in Sageview. Um, we, are, we are in the process of, uh, of getting that data now. And uh, once that data is loaded up into Sageview, we're going to have all kinds of functionality around benchmarking. Is that going to be, is the, is the population Sage customers or is it something like RMA where you're getting statistics on no, this is going to be this is going to be a national database and it's you're going to be able to report regionally um, you're also going to you're also going to be able to report uh, statewide as well as uh, uh, United States wide so hmm. are you able to have like a blended uh, you know NAT code I mean have a more than yes Okay. Yeah, yeah, everything's going to be based around the NAICS codes. And the good news is, is when you, when you, uh, when you achieve uh, the NAICS code that you want, um, we're actually going to um, uh, put uh, the industry benchmarkings automatically going to be populated for you around each ratio. Okay. okay? So, it, it, so it's automatically going to come in there for you once you have the right industry selected. It it's going to be a beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful thing. I'm really excited about it because we've been begging for this. So, um, you're going to be uh, your dentist, right? You're, you're going to yeah. be very. You're, you're going to be very impressed, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it could be a real uh, consulting opportunity for your for your class. Yeah. To have a, yeah. a Zoom meeting and discuss, you know, like on a monthly or quarterly basis, and see you know what they're doing or how they're doing. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So I'm glad you asked that because that is coming. Yeah. All right. So let's move on. Um, uh, well, first of all, anyone else have any questions? Everybody else good? Okay. Good job, Ray. So, yeah, absolutely. So ne next area here that I want to discuss are custom KPIs and metrics because we already went into those a little bit. But I'm just going to show you where to build them, and uh, I'm not really going to give you a formula because I can't. I'm not allowed to do that. But uh, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to show you where to build those. So we're going to click on Add KPI. Now, as you continue to put business clients in here, you're going to build out accounts. And I'm going to show you the drop down of accounts that we have listed in here right now. But these are going to continually building out as you have different names of your accounts. There will never not be a time where you can't find an account you're looking for. All right. Um, so, with that being said, basically what you're going to do is you're going to name uh, you're going to name the KPI. You're going to give it a value format. You're going to give it a description, and then in box two, you're going to start building it out. And it's just this simple. Okay, and you'll start building it out however you want, um, but that's, that's how simple that is. Okay, and then you would just come down here and hit save, and you have a, a custom KPI. Um, that pretty much uh, takes care of your custom KPIs. I've already shown you basically within the, uh, within the client um, screen of how to utilize those KPIs. Um, but let's go back to the ABC Manufacturing Company, and now I'm going to jump into our quick analysis area. And this actually goes over profitability and growth for your business clients. And this is a very, um, this is also a very good feature within SageView. I really like this feature. So our quick analysis goes over profitability. Uh, first screen is profitability, and here's what this looks like. So again, you can adjust your calculation period so you're looking at the right information that you want to see. You'll adjust the end on date. Um, for the analysis type, we have profitability selected, and here's what that looks like. So income total, gross profit, operating profit, your earnings before interest and tax, and then down here uh, in this graph, it's going to show you fixed cost versus variable cost, revenue, total cost, and then your break-even points. Then, you'll, then it's going to go over gross profit percentage, actual, goal, and then the variance between the two, six months ago and 12 months ago. 
So you can see how your business client is trending all the way across the board. And then your performance, best and worst periods, and your decision points, break-even income and return on sales. The growth area goes over your retained earnings, actual six months ago and 12 months ago, retained earnings graph, and then your EBIT growth rate, actual six and 12, performance best and worst periods, revenue growth rate, actual six and 12, performance best and worst periods. Any questions on profitability and growth? Okay. Um, first area that you want to start building out um, is uh, where you're going to build, start building out your industry benchmarking. So you're going to have you're going to come into profile. Um, here you're going to go ahead and select the fiscal year start month. Then over on the industry tab, this is where the NAICS codes uh, come into play. So here's all of your NAICS codes. Now, um, these get very granular, meaning that you're going to be able to drill into these and really get granular with the industry that you're going to select, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's just say, for instance, we wanted to find a drywall guy. We're going to come up here, select construction. We're going to come here and select specialty trade, and then we're going to go to building finishing, and then there's our drywall guy right there. We'll go ahead and select that. Now we've got a drywall guy. Okay, so that's your industry, or that's where your industry benchmarking is going to start. Once that is selected, um, then it's going to filter in to where all of the ratios are, and uh, and then populate those industry averages for you. Um, now, the next thing I want to show you is the chart of accounts mapping area. Now, this is uh, one of the things that uh, kind of a necessary evil, really. <laughs> You're going to have to set up a chart of accounts. Um, uh, anyway, so you might as well, um, you know, enjoy this and have some fun with it. Um, so here, so what I do want to point out is your income inc account is always is always going to be from your business client. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to map from your income account to your normalized. Okay, and that's how this looks here. So if we start hitting the drop down, we can actually see some of this taking place. So this is your incoming account. This will be your mapped account will be your normalized chart of accounts. So you'll be mapping from and to, and then once that's in, it's mapped. Now we've done some things to streamline this process to make this easier for you. So if you do have some similar accounts with similar account numbers, you will be able to uh, save the page as a template, select the drop down, choose that template, and you'll have very little mapping to do on the next one. We also allow you to go ahead and uh, click on the view unmapped accounts only. That way you're only uh, looking at your unmapped accounts, and then you can come straight down the list and map those over. Okay. Uh, any questions around chart of accounts mapping? Now, if this were QuickBooks, it would say QuickBooks here. Obviously, this is Sage 50, so it says that here. Um, but that's pretty much takes care of that area. Um, and that's pretty much going to conclude our demonstration today. So, um, Tara, is there anything else that um, you would like me to go over that uh, maybe I've, um, for some reason, I overlooked? Oh, it so also we do. Works, so on, was, works on mobile. For example, I'm looking at four companies here, and rather than having the kind of real estate across the board I need, it's just saying within a given company, I've got so many green and so many red alerts. I'm able from anywhere to go and drill simply by clicking on, for example, I clicked on the red for Trump Enterprises. Uh, the problem is his mouth is open, I'm going to be that. <laughs> right here, the problem is return on assets and inventory control are two, uh, two red key points. And right there, on my, on my mobile device in real time, I've got client access. Not too shabby. Nice, nice. Would, would anyone like to buy that for three dollars and ninety-five cents a month? Please raise your hand. <laughs> Come on, Dennis. <laughs> yes, Wade. You said that yes. uh, there were three Sage programs that were free. One was the Sage uh, Impact. One was the Sage View. What was the third one? Sage Value. Sage Value. Oh, and that's to kind of value your 
the cost. Yeah, that's for yeah. <clears throat> exactly. That's that's value pricing. And of course, Sage, what account edition is is also free. The you know you sign up for the accounts edition. Um, your your dashboard product, your admin product, uh, if you will, is free. Okay, and then to sign up for the five twenty five licenses for twenty five dollars. What is that one called? That's Sage. our Sage One Partner Pack. Yeah. Sage One Partner Pack. Perfect. Yes. Okay, I have, a, yes, I, have a, I have a question. I'm on the Sage View uh, website, and it says uh, free uh, try Sage View with a free 30 day trial by signing up. That sort of implies it's going to be paid for it after 30 days. Is that designed for non accountants, or I mean, guess I'm a little confused. Only accountants. You you have to be an accounting professional to subscribe to a Sage View. Not that you couldn't fudge. No. And say, well, yes, I'm an accounting professional. I want to try Sage View, but I strongly encourage if you want to if you want to give it a try, Gina. I gave you the inside scoop for 1995 uh, without any contract or without any uh, term commitment. Um, you can get on it and start connecting uh, QuickBooks clients and yeah. decide for yourself within 90 days, is this something I wanna, I, I'm gonna make a go of and it's gonna be a value add for my business or, yeah. or not? Um, I, I haven't had too many people go, no, I, I can't deal with this unless they're retiring. The people are somewhat pushed back, quite frankly. They're at that stage where they've got nine clients, they really don't care, they're winding down, they're not really trying to move anything further or, or you know, invest any more time. But I will tell you, our booth, which was right next to Intuit in Los Angeles at the Hilton, like 10 feet away, they kept popping over to take a look at Sage View. They weren't, they weren't lining up for my Sage One demo, so I was kind of lonely. But uh, Hamina was there doing Sage I I was like the orphan looking in the window at, at the deli of all those people eating all that nice food. And I'm going, please, sir, can I have some? <laughs> but they love Sage View. They, they eat it up and they're like, wow, this is a no-brainer. Um, I, I'm going to try it. And, of course, it won the Innovation Award again, second year. So it's like 20 bucks a month for an account and then you can just sign up for? Yeah, you have, you have five accounts included with that. Got it. Okay, so you can track five clients on Sage View for twenty dollars a month. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, roughly in, in round numbers, it's four dollars a month for each client, and then you don't buy it in packs afterwards. If you if I've got six clients, I add another client for three ninety five. Okay. If I've got Ten clients, I add them for thirty nine ninety five. Okay. Perfect. I yeah, think. Very this simple. Is I mean, you know, um, it's part. it's a win win. Because after you start working with Sage and it becomes a joy to work with them, and then you're running into problems with other products, it's like, well, why wouldn't I try more of Sage? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not exclusionary. I, I see things as complementary. Uh, there's a place for clients. Who, it's going to make perfect sense to run QuickBooks sure. or for me to invest time to learn a new product like Zero or Wave. Uh, that's an individual you know, decision based on the value of my time and my expertise and the kind of client model I want to have. But I will tell you, I've always, always found that Sage One and Sage View comp help complement uh, QuickBooks Pro Advisors um, at a place where they need it the most. So trust me, it, wor it works both ways. I'm never saying, oh, you've got to get rid of that. No, no. I hear you. Got it. Thank okay. you. Wade, you. Wade, you did an awesome job. Any any last minute questions before we wrap up? We've, we were right one minute to the mark. Uh, that's awesome, Wade. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> Wade said there were three. Oh, okay, Linda, you had asked your questions. I asked it. We got the answer. You got that. <laughs> okay. The third one was Sage Value. Yes. Yes. And I would highly recommend everyone get on Sage Impact now. It's yep. free, um, and you can look at the Sage. I call it the Sage Universe because there's so much there. Um, I'm liking the Sage City. I'm liking the Sage University. The only one thing that I do not like 
is the 50 million profiles I have to set up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Each one of them requires a, a um, username and password. So... Oh, and you can't use the same username and oh, password? Oh, yes, you can. Yes, yeah. you can. And yeah. I think one of them, the password is um, different parameters than the rest. So well, they, they should be the same. Uh, Gina, just to your point, if I, were, if I set up anybody, including members of the group, um, I'll set up, let's say, for example, tar at sage.com. That's my login for Impact. It's my login for View. It's my login for Sage One Accounts Edition, and then my password could vary for those modules. Sure. I, I'm lazy. I use one. You know that, that I'm not going to forget. <laughs> I don't have to tape to my uh, mirror in the morning, so I use the same password for all of them. Um, but and you can, by the way, those are changeable. And you can change your password ten times a day. Yes. But the email that you use as your login is connected to the license for that application. It can be the same or it could be different. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you, Wade. Thank you, Tom. Wow. Wade, I'm going to have you stop screen sharing. We'll talk a little bit before we um, say goodbye. He can start. Uh, please, anybody get a hold of me no later than Monday afternoon or early next week. And if you want to get set up with SageView, please don't try the trial version. It confuses the whole order cycle. I've got to end up deleting accounts, rebuilding. Uh, okay. Just reach out to me. I'll get you set up. Good. And, uh, you Good. Know, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. That is Thank awesome. Thank you so much. Your email Thank you. Again, Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Wade. Have a great week. Absolutely. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Linda's saying something? I want Tar's email. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's very simple. It's Tar period ST period Martin. That's Tar St. Martin, but they put a period in after my first name and after right. the ST at sage.com. And so we can send you an email and say we want to talk to you on Monday, and then you'll... Yeah, and, and all I'm going to do is say, all right, all I'm going to need is, you know, very simple, first and last name, the name of the firm, your email address and phone number, um, and I'm going to get you set up in a matter of minutes and send you back a link with your, with your setup. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Clark, and can yes, you send me a link for my, you know, because I know I already signed up for it. Your oh. licenses of that? Yeah, I've already paid for my licenses, and I still haven't gotten a link. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, um, let's take a look. I think I've got yours right here, literally on my desk. Yep. Perfect. Yes, I do have it, and you are set up. I will send you that link uh, right now. However, you can go, you can go right into uh, uh, www.sage.com forward slash NA for North America, forward slash accountant. And at the black bar on the top, you'll see a drop down. You can pick your application and go in, but I'm going to share with you direct links in your password, just the way we set them up with that. Thank you very much for you. joining last week. We've got you, we got you set up now. All right, great. Thank you. And you, and you promised me, you promised me we get our first 10 going, so. I'm <laughs> to uh, stop sharing. have to try it out first. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you. Thank you again. Any other questions, just reach out to me directly. I'm, I'm easy to get a hold of. And you're also on our Facebook group, so yes. people can just put a message right there and get, get in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you very much. Great demo, Wade. Thank you. And thank you, Wade. Absolutely. We will Thanks, see everyone. everyone next week, same time, same place. Thank you.